Dreams do not have a filter that your normal, polite, waking self puts up. Welcome to the hidden meaning of dreams with Sweet Georgia Pam. It does matter what the dreamer themselves associates with those things that come up in the dream. Spiritual director, dream expert, author, and educator, Sweet Georgia Pam is here to remind us that dreams are the answer. They're always with you. They know you better than you know yourself, and they're always trying to tell you the truth. There's some back and forth here between you and some awareness. And now your host, Melissa Carter. SweetGeorgiaPam.com. That's your hub to find out about a free guide that she's got to help you recall your dreams better. Your Her newsletter that I think is brilliantly written that you can be a part of. Uh, also, you can get one-on-one sessions with Pam regarding your dreams. You can learn all about her. Again, SweetGeorgiaPam.com. We're based in Atlanta, so that's why we got Sweet Georgia in there, Sweet Georgia Pam. Um, also, social media, you can DM her, Sweet Georgia Pam. That explains the accents, too. I don't hear my accent, but yeah. apparently other people do. <laughs> Anytime I'm talking with someone who is not from the South, they were like, oh, I love that accent. Or you've got a thick accent. I'm like, I do? I don't notice it. Anyway, SweetGeorgiaPam.com. Since you're talking about Georgia and the name and the sweet Georgia yes. name and all of that, and we're, we're based out of Atlanta, I got to give a shout out to my Bulldogs. I'm a UGA alumni. Go dogs. They did a great job this year, winning the national championship again. So Back to back. Little plug for UGA. Love it. I have a, I have a friend, uh, more than one friend, that went to graduate school at Georgia as well as their bachelor's. And they call it, they're a double dog is what they call it. If you go to Georgia and you get two degrees. So now they've got two national championships. So they, they double dogged it. So, yes, there you go. love it, love it. <laughs> Shout out, go dogs. Okay. All now right, so my recurring dream, and it happened recently, so I thought this is, uh-huh. I, I got to talk to Pam about this. It has to do with my baby mama, Katie Jo, if you are listen to me on the radio in Atlanta. She and I have a great relationship. We were together for nine years. We had our son. We started having issues before our son was born, and we determined that we didn't think we would make it the long haul. So it was better to break up when he was an infant than to wait until he was older and regret not taking care of it when we should have. And we did it in, you know, and I give kudos to her because she's really the one that get, had the come to Jesus moment, so to speak, of if we're going to maintain a friendship, we need to bite the bullet on the romance. And so it was painful. You know, it was not fun for that year. It was about a year. It took us to kind of get back on the tracks. Since then, it's been great. We co parent We do get on each other's nerves, but we get on each other's nerves at times of things, you know, like sisters would as much as exes would because we're so different. You're attracted to usually the opposite. And so I'm the planner and I'm the coordinator and she's the spontaneous one. Right. So when we work together, we work very well together. But when we have any kind of disagreement on anything, it's usually immediate you're getting on my nerves like impatience. So we have immediate impatience with each other because we've known each other for a long time. And usually our consistent, I mean, we talk almost every day and our consistent conversation has to do with our son, right? So she's in another serious relationship. I love the person she's with. And I think out of respect, I make sure that, you know, it. we're concise on, on what she and I talk about, right? In the beginning, I never wanted her new girlfriend. They've been together for years now. But in the beginning, I didn't want her to think they're, you know, because that's walking into a couple who talk every day, who have a young son, it's got to be intimidating. And you also, I'm sure, naturally are going to be like, is she trying to get back in the picture? And so we usually keep every conversation very, you know, but we're, we're co, co-captains and co-CEOs of our son. With that being said, I mean, there are times where we obviously we're still friends and we talk about other things and have long conversations. So we still have a thread of, I don't want to say intimacy, but I guess intimacy where it's, you know, we're we're good friends. Okay. Okay. What I feel guilty about is my recurring dreams are usually about her and the beginning of it, we're doing fine in a conversation. The subject matters is usually not consistent, but it always devolves into us arguing. And my problem is I become violent. She doesn't become violent. I physically attack her every time I have this dream. It doesn't happen often, but when it does, I wake up so disappointed, I guess, at because it just, I don't, maybe, I don't know, you can tell me and guide me on this, but I always feel like, oh, I want to get to a certain level and the dream just, when I wake up, 
I feel like it happened. I feel ashamed for physically attacking her because I've never physically attacked her in real life. But it's all it's always like I'm choking her. I'm punching her. I'm you know, I'm just so enraged by her. Yeah. And 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 the last time this happened, nothing in the waking world had happened to where I felt that way. Right. So we you know, it was we were doing great so we're we're not sure. the typical exes who were at each other's throat all the time we're not but in, in my dreams <laughs> it just seems that i have this this physical anger so anyway mm-hmm. okay all right i'm being so, vulnerable and confessing that yeah yeah so the first thing that i want to say oh that's the first of all oh that's nice I've never told her. She would be shocked. She'd be hurt. <laughs> She'd, her well, feelings would be hurt. All right. Well, then let's break it down so that you can relieve your guilt and she won't be hurt by it because we'll be able to see this in context, right? right. So the first thing that is true is that when you wake up, your logical brain, we've talked about this before, logic and reason comes on board and immediately sees the dream as literal. Mm-hmm. So that is a natural waking mind response to see that as a literal interpretation and to feel the absolutely appropriate remorse that you would feel if that were true that i'm an abuser that That, yes that's how i feel like i'm an abuser caveat is not accurate the literal brain or the literal interpretation is very rarely the accurate interpretation first of all that didn't really happen and the reason it feels like it really happened is because your brain doesn't know the difference. So the area in like neuroimaging, they've done research on this, the area of the brain that lights up in a physical altercation is the same area of the brain for you that lights up in your dream physical altercation. So your brain doesn't know the difference between okay. did this really happen or, or was this in the dream state? So you've kind of got two layers when you wake up uh, that you're, inner critic can jump on board and go see you know you're a terrible person Melissa, right, right right so there's two reasons that that comes on board right away but what is true is that most dreams are metaphorical in nature right they're layered in the meaning characters in the dreams don't always represent the actual people in waking mind. so there's a couple questions that i want to go through with you to see sure. to find some connection to what this might be since we know what it's not Okay. Right. right. Um, so in the dream itself, let's go to this specific one that you're talking about. What were your emotions in the dream? Not when you woke up after the dream. Right. What were you feeling in the dream itself? It's one of those things I can't remember what led up to it. In the dream, initially, it was com- comfort, like or not even comfort. It was just uh, it was there was no emotion, right? There, it was it was nothing okay. bad. It was just it was just I was comfortable. Okay. And then I don't know what, but it turned into just. Um, well, I think what really triggers it is that I'm not being heard or appreciated or my um, personality, I guess, that okay. I'm not. Because usually in the dream, it, it, it ends up being because, gosh, and it's so subtle. It's not like there's not a, a lot of detail in what tr- what turns <laughs> like it right. truly is on a dime. Because I can't even, I feel like we were in a hallway or in a dining room area or something. And I just remember jumping on her. And, um, but I think the emotions that are coming as I'm jumping on her is that I'm not getting, well, I mean, to be more selfish, I think I'm not getting my way. I think just to make it primal, you know, I think maybe again, I'm, I don't want to, I don't want to give it too much description that's not accurate. I think it's, I'm just not getting my way. And then when you jump on her, and let's just go through the the details, uh, you don't have to spell them all out. Not jump on her in a fun way. Again, jumping on her to... No, I know, like violent. (laughs) Right. And, 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 you know, feel your vulnerability out here. Like, you don't have to overshare if you're not comfortable. But when you're in that state and being physically violent, what is your emotion in the dream? I know you, you talked a little bit about until you actually do but then what happens? i think it's i think it's um resentment because it's not it's an anger like i'm trying to fine-tune it it's mm-hmm. it's an anger but it's a frustration it's a it's a it's like i can't get 
this is the last resort. I can't get again what I want, whatever that is. And so now I just have to, it's almost like if I verbally can't get my way, then I'm physically going to try to get your attention. So you understand that I'm, I'm not something. So it's a, it's a, it's a frustrating resentment kind of mix. Yeah. Okay. For you and for all of our listeners, if you really sit down and have this dialogue and really explain the feelings in the dream, like Melissa, I heard a lot in there that's potential for why this might have come up, right? So I heard you say, I'm not being heard, or I'm not being appreciated, or I'm not getting my way. And then what I wrote down kind of as a side note to that, because it felt like what felt true for me as I was kind of standing in that space and my version of your dream is she overrides or overpowers, overpowers me. Or I give her more power than I'm giving to me. And so on a dime, which is reflexive, my reflex kind of comes roaring out of me so that I can, um, I'm projecting my own stuff, right? So that I can stand up for myself. Like I will be hurt. I will get my attention. I will show my power. Now, let me ask a question because I will say that this happened. This dream came up in kind of a, you know, a time where I was dealing with several things, several situations in my life Yeah, that were frustrating. So yeah. the other question is, does she represent her? Or does she represent a collective? Because yeah. at the time, that's why that's why the logic mind when I woke up was confused because she and I had been getting along great and collaborating great, but there were other things in my life right. that I probably felt more frustrated by than her. Perfect. perfect. That's perfect. So this is why I say your dreams are to you, for you, right? Because there is some identifier, there's some fingerprint in there for you to notice. And I can't always necessarily pinpoint where that is for you, but I can help you kind of feel it out. So when you were when you were talking about this, it seems really clear to me that she is a stand-in for something else that is per, that is um, has that particular fingerprint of frustration, right? And the reason she comes up is because the way that your dream of mind works is it casts a wide net over, okay, I've got this one buildup of frustration happening in waking life. Maybe it's in a new situation I'm not familiar with, or it's a, a relationship I'm not real comfortable with. So your dream of mind casts a wide net. What have I ever experienced that feels similar to that emotional fingerprint? And so it could be that that's why Katie Joe pops up in this scenario is because that's a familiar place where you can experience acting that frustration out or mm -hmm. your dreaming mind can show you how your triggered response looks and feels, right? Which might right. be what this is about. It's well, like, also, I mean, especially during the pandemic, she's one of the most consistent people that I've been able, you know, that I've seen because of our exchange of our son too. But yeah, at the time it makes more sense again, from my interpretation of it and knowing that there were things that I guess, I, again, with your dreams, you don't know what's popping up, but when you work with your dream, and I was right. like, oh yeah, well, during that time there was this house right. repair stuff and nobody was listening to me about, yeah. you know, and I'm yeah. having to make 10,000 phone calls for that. And then also there was a family situation where it's like, okay, well, I, you know, that's something else that, and other yeah. things that were just not, not going smoothly. And yeah. so <laughs> Katie yeah. Joe unfortunately had to take the brunt of it but i've definitely had that feeling with her before too but it's certainly not that it, it, not at that at that time yeah so when you develop a regular dialogue with your dreaming mind when you're regularly paying attention like you are you can go like okay i recognize that this is about something frustration and recognize also that it doesn't seem to be about kitty joe in person in real life this isn't really a conflict between us what it's showing you and what you can do going forward is go, oh, I'm not, I'm not empowering myself. And if I don't empower myself to speak to these frustrations, then it will be triggered into this shadow work, this shadow stuff expression coming out, right? It's a heads up. This frustration is building. Right. Yeah. 
Right. Well, and like I said, it's a recurring dream. So anytime, obviously, I feel that way, the symbolism is consistent, but the situations, but the message it's also sending to me is consistent, right? It's that, and that's, and that's definitely something with me that can be an issue is me empowering myself in a situation for sure. So going forward, you can acknowledge when this recurring dream happens again, what's my plan? What do I want to do to say, Hey, thanks for showing me that before it came to blows and waking life. (laughs) Right. Right. And I'm going to try to do better to you. self. I'm going to try to empower you, hear you. I hear that you want to beat the wall down or you want to beat somebody up so that you can hurt. Let me see if I can help you out today. And then you just go about your day looking out for yourself in a different way. See, I mean, that dreams are entertaining, but dreams also are there to serve a purpose for you if you want them to. SweetGeorgiaPam.com is the website. If you have a hard time remembering dreams like mine, then go to SweetGeorgiaPam.com. She's got a free guide, Six Nights to Better Dream Recall. Thank you, my love. And that's an idea of what you'd get in a one-on-one session, you know, just kind of digging deeper, digging deeper and being vulnerable. She is on the social medias, SweetGeorgiaPam.com. You can always DM her. And if you're watching on YouTube, we haven't even talked about this here in the past couple episodes, but if you're watching on YouTube, we are on YouTube and you can leave a description of your dream in the comments. We may use them for future shows. So, Pam, thank you very much. Appreciate it. You're welcome, my love. Sweet dreams, everybody. The content in this podcast is for entertainment and educational purposes only. Pam Muller is not a licensed mental health professional. If you or someone you know suffers from severe, persistent nightmares, please seek medical help.